Very brief notes on setting up a HW2000 machine, and these are very, very brief. So we'll start off with actual bits and pieces. The machine itself, you can have the drive out the left or the right hand side, tension rods out the left or the right hand side. If you have to turn the rods round, you have to swap them as well. Um, they are handed. Um, on the rods, you've got drive rod, lock rod, which goes to the middle there, to the lock stretcher. And then two detection rods, a short and a long one. And they fit off the switch extension pieces. Those blue bits you can see diving down. If you've watched the videos before, you can see that there's a kink in those rods so that they do not jam up against the rail when the switch is up. So you see that kink that goes out. Rubber insulations in those sides. Cup and cone washers in these sides. Cup and cone allows for a bit of up and down movement, etc. Because you will get drifting of this switch forward and backwards with heat and cold. And you'll also get voiding in the P-way as well. So the cup and cones allow for that. First thing you need to do, once you've got your machine bolted down, um, it's nine, I forget this right side. Of, it's, there's a set measurement, 990 I think it is. Between the inside leading edge and the centre line of the machine. And if you want a good way of finding out the centre line of the machine, apart from the middle of the drive rod there, if you go to the lid of the machine, there's a ridge. And that ridge is the centre line of the machine. So you can use that as you measure, screw your machine down. Uh, you notice it's screwed down through the plate, also on the sole plate there at the front, that's stop it moving. Um, then get your points up one way that you require them. In this case, we have them in the normal. Uh, badge is on the normal. So as you can see, the points are normal. When you're winding these up, you want to be floated all your rods. Um, you can take all the rods out to start with. It's just a bit of a ball ache if you do that. You actually want them in there to start with. But float them so that they're loose, so you can wind. And you wind up, make sure your switch rail is up. And if you get a spanner, it's got what we call a little bit of dick. So you can put your spanner in there. You can't bar it off. At that point, you should still be able to wind and get this escapement mechanism to push your lock rod in, your drive bar in. Because the first thing it meets is your lock in there. You can see it if you look very carefully down here. Um, now, obviously, if that bar jams straight away, it's meeting your lock. If you float your lock, it should still carry on through that bar. If it's not, it's because even though you've got the points fitting up, you still need to lose more motion to allow this escapement to go round and push. Because don't forget the escapement goes round and as it goes round, it's kicking this rod out to drive your points. But at the same time, that needs to complete its movement and then go in. So you can have it where, yes, my points are up, but I'm not giving it that little bit extra to carry on with that movement. So that's lost motion. You notice there's a lot of lost motion on one side. When we put them over the other way, there'll be a lot of lost motion on the other side as well. So even though they're fitting up, we have to back this nut off on the, the PA, the precise adjustment, to allow that. Yes, it's up, but yes, this can complete its escapement movement and can drive the rod. So once you've got them fitting up both ways, next thing to do is to set the lock up. Now, simplest answer to set the lock up, you want to one and a half mil gauge in your switch rail. Again, remember, switches creep forward and backwards in hot and cold. If you set the lock up absolutely tight against that, first warm day you get, you're never gonna get your lock. It's just gonna jam straight away. So you need to give it that little bit of clearance. That one and a half mil gauge in, set your lock. Now, rule of thumb, if you're setting it, if you wind it in, you're giving it the ability to lock. If you wind it out, you're simulating a train pulling that or that switch pulling off and you should fail the lock. So if your lock's going in with your one and a half, great. If your lock's going in with your three and a half, which you should fail to, then wind it out. So, uh, if, it's, if it's already failing at your one and a half, wind it in. Set that side up, get your points over, make sure they go over the other way on your drive. Set your lock up that side. And remember, winding it out is to fail, winding it in is to give it. So it's the exact opposite. And a word of warning here, when you adjust your lock, you notice the machines on the left-hand side of the points here, okay? If we're adjusting this switch rail here, this lock here, it's on this nut here, on the back. If we are adjusting that switch rail there, 
it's done on that nut. So it's the nearest one, nearest to nearest, nearest to nearest, okay? Finally, detection. Now, on the old machines that were just wired without couplers, that was great. You could actually, if you were very careful, you could undo the four nuts here. They're all the same nuts, by the way. So if you've got an old battery T-spanner, an insulated battery T-spanner, that fits all of these beautifully. You could lift this detection assembly completely off and you could see inside. But what you can do is you can look quite clearly down here. You can see, um, you see rollers that drop into your, into your gap groove. If you look very carefully there, the mechanism, you can see the mechanism has dropped as we've got detection. So that's telling us it's dropped into its cradle. If you set it too fine, it'll kick out every time a train goes over it. If you set it too coarse, you get the exact opposite. Your detection will, should never break. So you need to set this very carefully. Um, and again, you have pairs of contacts. So an in and out for a positive and in and out for a negative, say. Uh, at the moment it's over this side, so it's coming in and out, positive, in and out, negative, for example. Set your meter on it. Um, and you can judge that. So when you set your detection again, use your slotted gauges and use them in here. So if you think that switch rail's up now, okay, so if I want to give it detection, take it in. So I would set my slotted gauges, well, I'll set my slotted gauges here to simulate the rail. I'm pulling it on and off. And then when you do the other side, you set them on the opposite. So it's it, same as this. Nearest, 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 nearest. You're setting it on that side, setting it on that side, depending on which way you're doing it round. Um, finally, one thing to remember, you need to have at least a minimum of two mil pushed in on each of these protection contacts. You don't want them sat right on the edge because that will be very light and you'll just get a train going over it and blobbing the detection as you go. And that's very basics, just the very basics for getting it set up. Uh, it takes about half an hour as you get it down to a T, uh, fine T, obviously longer if you've got to set all the equipment up. Um, and there are detailed instructions to follow, uh, course notes, etc. Uh, and again, a little safety feature, if you're going to work on these, whether they're wired up or not, pull your pin. When you put your handle in, it pulls that up, cuts the isolation of the feed off. Um, and that's just safety first. A few more little pointers just to finish off on. Um, as you can appreciate, the closed switch is up on this side now and the open switch is open on that side. We set the closed switch with a very fine tolerance. We set the open switch with a very large tolerance because obviously it's open. We're not so much bothered about that, but we want to prove that that switch rail is in the right place. You know, it is actually open. Uh, if you think of Boolean algebra, you, you can have uh, one and a zero. You can have one and a zero, but you can never have a zero and a zero or a one and a one. Um, modern digital parlance so the closed switch has a very narrow gap on the rollers inside the detection contacts and the open switch has a very large gap for detection contacts um, in, in the grooves in the actual rods that go through for detection and what is on one side will be the exact opposite on the other so again if when the switch is over the other way the opposite rod will have a very small uh, roller gap for the detection to drop into uh, on the closed switch and then on the open switch it will have a very large notch for it to drop into and you can see down inside there and you can judge that um, but you can set that with a slot of gauges and what you'll see is this mechanism starts to creep up very slowly so you can watch it by eye uh, as I mentioned don't forget the two mil because if you set it too fine you get a bit of voiding and it'll just blob the detection underneath it um, all your contacts please keep them clean uh, the rollers please keep them clean you will find a lot of grease gets inside these machines a little tiny bit of grease dries out gets underneath the roller and it will stand your rollers off they're plastic rollers and it will stand off um, and that will blob your detection as well uh, same with the lock rods the lock rods um, although you can, if you look at that nut there, it's it's a collar either side fixed perfectly and the collar either side fixed perfectly in there. The lock rod inside the machine has exactly the same. It has a, a large notch and a thin notch. The thin notch is the side you're locking up and the large notch is the opposite side. Once you put the machine over the other way, the other set of notches will line up and that will be exactly the same again. A thin notch for the close switch and a large notch for the open switch. 